my gosh. I am going to share with you my secret to French onion soup. It's work. It takes some work. But I'm making a stock specifically for my French onion soup. You can use it for other things, but specifically to make my French onion soup amazing. So let me introduce you to my ingredients. So I got about, oh, five, six pounds of bones, marrow bones, octels, scrap meat that I didn't use that I kept in the fridge. I have five good-sized onions, about 10 good-sized garlic cloves, I got the rest of my parsley from my garden, because here it's getting cold, and my parsley is not doing so well. So I got the, what's left with the stems, and with thyme, silver thyme, regular thyme is fine, that's what I have in my garden. And um, we got some leeks, um, and then I got some extra parts, I'm, I'm going to cut them, clean them, um, and I, I'll use almost all of it. The very dark green I won't use, but pretty much almost all of it. Um, and the reason why it's going to cook so much longer, it will not put any bitterness at all. So trust me. Um, I got a parsnip. I got a couple carrots. I got, oh, five of these celeries. Stocks. I got peppercorn, brandy. I got some stems from mushrooms I had from, uh, this week. And I think that covers it. Yeah. So let's get cooking. I put the oven on for 450 degrees. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some olive oil. And I'm going to have my handy kitchen towel nearby. And I'm just going to coat these guys. Oh, and you'll also need some tomato paste. Uh, get my tomato paste. And I am going to just put some on each bone. Like that. And it equates probably to two tablespoons of tomato paste. But that's it. That's all I'm putting on there. Anyways, I'm going to get a brush, and I'm just going to brush that tomato paste on top. There we go. Alright. Now the olive oil that went in there Um, what we're going to do is move it around so it coats the bottom. There we go. Beautiful. I always get stuff on my fingers. <laughs> Make sure you always wash your hands. All right, so oven's on at 450 degrees and about Push this more in the center. Usually I have a deeper pan, but I got a new oven and my old pan way too big for it. Uh, I'm to buy a new pan. Uh, what are you going to do? All right, we'll be back. Oh, in an hour. In the meantime, I'm going to chop up my vegetables and clean them up and do all the prep. And we'll be back. <laughs> oh, I've been busy. Get my celery, my carrots, my parsnips all chopped up. And by the way, just loosely chop it. Because that's going to cook and then you're going to strain it. And we got our leeks here. They're washed and ready. But I wanted to show you how I do the onion. You don't have to go crazy on the onion. Just cut each end off. Cut it in half. And then just peel. Like that. Like that. And then quarter it. And that's it. 
your garlic. You're just going to give it a, you, you can do it one or two ways. You can uh, give it a tap like that and then peel it. And then what I do, I give it another tap and throw it in. Or, this is another method, you can grab it and twist it and the shelling will come right off. Whatever you find easier. Me, it depends on my fancy. Today I fancy this. Oh, that easy. Alright, I'm going to do the rest. And uh, we'll be back. So there we have it. It's roasted for an hour. And look at the beauty of that. Now we're just going to remove it. And then we're going to pour off any excess fat. And deglaze. Drag my tongs. Slide it onto a spoon. And drop it in there. Let's take care of this big one. Slide it on the spoon. That way it doesn't slip on you. Drop it in there. The oxtails are pretty easy. I'm going to drop that in there. Drop that in there. Smell this. I wish you guys could smell this. Just amazing. That caramelization. Just gonna, oh my god. Alright. Okay. So now I'm just gonna drain the fat off of this. And hopefully I'm not making too much mess. Now keep in mind this is hot. And what we want to do is we want to save that pan and run some hot water. And all the excess fat is just going to pour out. Now, turn on your burner. Alright folks, this is 
super easy. Now you're going to bring that over. You're going to drop your vegetables into there. setting and I see I got my herbs in there my peppercorns my vegetables and uh, it's best to cover your vegetables with water um, but it's okay I've done this before and it's fine just no salt people so this will be ready in the morning and then we will strain it and put it in an air, airtight container, put it in the fridge, and all that grease will float to the top. It takes eight hours. So just in time for me to make my French onion soup for tomorrow night. Voila. So we'll be back once uh, this is ready, and you'll see me take everything out, strain it, and uh, yeah, that's really it. So, I'll see you tomorrow. Once I, bon appetit. Okay. This is what it looks after the night. Now I'm just going to remove everything, strain it. Helpful thing is, when you strain it, push down so you get the juices out. And keep going until all this is nice and clean. And then I will strain it again. And then put it in a container. Cover it in an airtight container and leave it eight hours minimum in the fridge so that the fat comes to the top and then I can scoop it up later. Okay, so it is the results. There's the broth. Filled up my container. I'm gonna seal it and put it in the fridge. And we'll be back in eight hours. There you have it, French onion soup. Look how creamy and dark that is with a proper beef stock. Plenty of glial cheese in there. A little bit of dill on top of the bread. Oh my god, that's delicious. Bonsoir. Bon appétit. Hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe. Thank you to my subscribers. Like it if you like it. Comment. If you do this, I love people doing this. Anyways, bonsoir, bon appétit, merci.